In this video, we're going to take a look at operations related to numeric values and discuss some of the interesting ways that C works with these different operations and understand just the way that order of operations generally work in C. So starting off, let's talk about some of the basic operations that we have. We can, of course, add numbers together, right? Doing things like I plus J, for instance. So we have I equals two, J equals three, and we do I plus J to give us this value of sum. Uh, we could subtract the numbers, right? We can multiply the numbers. We could divide the numbers. We could do modulus, right? Modulus is the remainder of division, of course. So these are the different operations that we have available to us. Now, in discussing these different types of operations, there's a few different things that we should be careful of in terms of quirks of these operations. So when I have two integers like this, most of these operations are going to be pretty straightforward. If I add the numbers together, you know, the result is going to be an integer, so it's no problem, right? Subtraction, result will be an integer. It might be negative, but that's not really anything to worry about um, in this case. Multiplication, we are going to have, you know, an integer result, so that's okay. Division, we won't necessarily have an integer result. What would happen if I divided these two numbers? Well, for one, of course, sum is declared as an int, so we would have to make this into something else. So perhaps a float or a double might work. Let's make it a double for now. And let's just try printing this out and see what we get. So to print out a double, we of course use percent %f. And let's take a look at that result. So if I go ahead and compile this code and I run it, notice that I get an answer of 0 in this case. But that's not what 2 divided by 3 is. 2 divided, 2 divided by 3 is not 0. It's something like, uh, I think it's like 0 0.66 repeating, right? So something has gone wrong here. The main thing that's gone wrong is if you provide C with two integers to divide, C will make the result an integer as well. It will actually match the type to the operands in this case. So in order to get a decimal value out of this, we would have to actually change these to also be decimal values. So let's just see if I make these both doubles, what would end up happening. If I do this and run it, now you see that I actually get the expected result, which is 0 0.66 repeating. Of course, since there's a limited amount of precision in programming languages, the last digit rounds up to a seven. This is the same sort of thing that you see in a calculator, right? Although it's 0 0.66 repeating on infinitely forever, we will truncate it and round the last digit in order to create the same sort of level of accuracy without having to store an infinite decimal value, right? So you can see here that the type of the operands actually affects the result of that operation as well. So you can see if you divide two integers, you get an integer result. If you divide two floating point numbers, you'll get a floating point result. So you have to be very careful about the way that you're actually doing these operations. You need to make sure that your operations are going to be consistent with the typing. Now you can see something very similarly similar with some other operations as well. So one thing that I want to talk a bit about is mixing different operations. So say I have a double and an int in this case. What do we expect the result of that to be? Let's, let's take a look and see. If I compile this and run it, you see that I actually do get a floating point as a result. The reasoning is that if at least one of the things is, uh, in this case, floating point or double, it will actually give you that expected result rather than giving you the integer result. So basically, the main idea here is that at least one of your things has to be a float or a double if you're going to divide in order to get a decimal result. Otherwise, you will end up with an integer result. Not that the integer result is always wrong, right? If you want to do integer division, then of course, declaring them both as integers is good. But this is just a common trip up point for a lot of people where they, you know, try to do division and get some weird result and say, why is that happening? And it's typically just because the variable types are inconsistent. Now, another sort of area that we should touch on is what if one of these were decimal and one of them was not, and we did something like adding these numbers together. Let's have a look at that. So if I do this, for instance, what we'll get is a decimal value. So you can see that in this case, again, with mixing, if one of them is a floating point or a double, uh, C is actually going to interpret it as the right type of result. So this is something good to keep in mind. Now, what if I make this an int instead? This is another thing that we might want to be aware of. You know, if we make this an int, we have a double in the operations, what will end up happening? In this case, if I compile it, oh, I'm actually getting this because I kept this as a floating point, right? So in this case, if I compile this and I run it, you'll see the result is integer. So I'll actually convert it into an integer result, even though it's not an integer. So this gives you a little bit more information about how these different operations interact with their types. 
Now let's talk a little bit more about some other operations. There are unary operations which act on a single variable. So for example, if I want to take the value of j and negate it, for instance, I could say j equals negative j. And then let's just go ahead and print that out and see what we get. So when we do this print, you'll see in this case, um, oh, sorry, I forgot the, the semicolon, of course. So I'll put the semicolon in. And now in this case, you'll see that I get the negation of that value. This is called a unary operator. It just negates, or you also have the plus version, which does the opposite of the negation, of course. These ones have the highest precedence out of any other C operator. So these unary operations are top precedence to negate values, for instance, is the most common way that you would use them. Then you have like multiplication, division, and modulus, and then you have addition and subtraction after that. A few other important types of C operations that we have is things like plus equals, which we see in a lot of languages, right? I could take J, you know, if we wanted to do J equals J plus one, we could actually shorten that to just say J plus equals one like this, right? Same idea, we can subtract equals to do j equals j minus a value, uh, multiply equals to multiply equals a value, right? And then divide equals as well. So we have all of these operations as well. Um, oh, and modulus equals too, if you want that. And then the final sort of operation that I think is important to know about is j plus plus and j minus minus. j plus plus increments the value by one. So you'll see in this case, it increases by one. j minus minus, subtracts the value by one. So it actually reduces it by one. So this is another type of operation that you have. So this gives you an idea of some of the different operations that you have available to you in C and some of the different sort of combinations of operations in terms of mixing together types for various different operations in C as well. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.